Hello, Father's Faithful. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School this week. When you pray, please remember the following people. Kurt, Sharon, David, Calvin. Pray for JC, Debbie, James, Kemp, Eric, and I have a couple of unspoken requests this week, but the Lord knows who they are and what they need. Have you ever been afraid? I was thinking about this week. I know that I have. Now, I don't consider myself to be a scaredy cat necessarily, but there have been a few times when I acted like one. There was one time several years ago when David and I were sitting in the den watching TV one night. It was dark outside when we glanced out the window and thought we saw figures, dark figures in our yard. And we live in um, a nut orchard with lots of acres, lots of trees, lots of places to hide. And it looked like there was someone who was running from tree to tree, hiding behind our trees, and we knew they were up to no good. Well, it petrified me, scared me to death. David started going around the house, looking out the windows to see what he could see. He finally ended up in the basement. I did too, because I was shivering with fear and hiding. But he jumped in his car and took off, and I had no idea what was going on. Actually, he had spotted a car and went to chase that car. It ended up to be a youth group, and they were flocking our yard with pink flamingos as a money razor. And it was scary to me. I can't believe how afraid I was. We went to eat with Daniel and Kayla at the lake the other night, and we were sitting out on their screened porch having supper when Kayla looked up and said, Oh, I think I see a snake. Well, of course, I had goosebumps all over me because I don't like snakes. It was a black snake, so everybody proceeded to get up and go outside and kind of watch the snake until he crawled under their porch, and I never moved because I don't care if it was a black snake. I don't like any snakes. The last time I was scared of a snake that I can remember was... Uh, when we had a snake actually in our house, it was upstairs, and David thought it was a shoestring until it moved, and he was calling on me for help, and I was paralyzed. I mean, frozen and paralyzed. He was about to bop me over the head over that, so it was an unhealthy fear for me. I don't know if you've ever been afraid or if you've ever been around someone who is afraid, but it's awful. I turned on the TV the other night and saw a woman who was petrified of bridges and a camera crew had followed her as she drove a four mile bridge. She drove across a four mile bridge and she was so upset and so afraid and so scared that I thought she was going to have a heart attack. Do you ever have fears that overwhelm you too? Do they hinder your life or get in the way of God's plan for you. You know, God wants us to move forward with faith and with strength. And if you are like me, sometimes the only way you can do that is with God's strength. We need to remember that we are loved by God. God knows our names and He has a plan for our lives. And it is not for us to be in fear over every new situation every different and uncomfortable situation either that we find ourselves in. So we mentioned this, but there are two types of fear. One is an unhealthy fear, and the other is a healthy fear. I think about times that I've been afraid in the past, and surprisingly, I can go to the Bible to read about what the Bible says about fear. First of all, in the Bible, we read the phrase, fear not. I read this week that it appears 63 times in the Bible. Now, I didn't check that out, so I'm not sure. But I also read that over 300 times the Bible addresses fear of some kind. So it is clear that God does not want his people to face adversity in life or decision-making with fear. In fact, the Apostle Paul gave young Timothy some advice about fear. 
In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul says this to Timothy, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So if God gives his followers a spirit of power and love and a sound mind, then what a powerful message that was for young Timothy and what a powerful message it is to us today. So let's talk about healthy fear first. Healthy fear can be good and beneficial. Actually, it can save your life. It's like wearing a seatbelt in a car. It's to keep you safe from harm. Now, I mentioned that I don't like snakes or, or mice. Well, I don't like lizards either. The other day, I was walking down the steps of the front porch, and I thought I saw a lizard. It was actually a dragonfly that swooped down and startled me, but I thought that it was a lizard, and I just about jumped out of my skin. Well, Ben was outside with me, and he says, Mama, why did you jump? And I said, I thought it was a lizard. And he said, well, what did you think that lizard was going to do to you? Growl and snarl and take a bite out of your leg? Well, no, not really, and maybe that is an unhealthy fear to have a fear of lizards. But I have a healthy fear of bears and lions and tigers, too. They're fine if they're in the zoo, but I don't want to meet one outside in the open. No, thank you. So, a healthy fear can heighten or sharpen your senses to danger. In fact, there's evidence that each of us has a fight or flight sense. And that's a natural response to situations where we might find ourselves in trouble sometimes. The Bible also says in Psalm 111.10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Healthy fear actually points us in the right direction. Proverbs 14, 27 says this, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but having a healthy fear of God is more like respect and reverence for the Lord. I always think about my daddy. I had a healthy fear of my daddy. It was a respect for him. I knew he loved me. I never doubted that for a minute. And it wasn't a cowering fear that I had of, of him. But I did fear him in a way that showed that I had a respect for my daddy. The same thing is true with God. It's always good to put the Lord in a place of reverence and awe in our hearts. And we need to have that reverence for him because if we don't, sometimes we may slip away spiritually. He's the creator and giver of life. He holds the world together. God is sovereign and he has all power. And we need to have a godly reverence, a godly fear for our Heavenly Father. But that is not the same thing as having unhealthy fear. An unhealthy fear is a fear that can paralyze you. Um, it can stop you from moving forward. It is a fear that will keep you emotionally, physically, and spiritually bound. And it is not a fear that comes from God. It is a fear that comes from the enemy of your soul. It's a fear that wants to keep you from being the person that God has designed you to be and created you to be. And it is so unreasonable, and many times it's based on lies and misinformation. Healthy fear is kind of like that red light on the dash of your car. It's a warning. It's a caution to your spirit that there's some kind of danger that might be getting ready to happen. Healthy fear sometimes slows you down so that you can give a situation more attention before doing something reckless or dangerous. On the other hand, unhealthy fear is sometimes a fear that has no basis at all. Or maybe it does have a basis. Maybe you did have a reason to fear and that has passed now and you are terrified that something like that might happen to you again. Take sickness for instance. 
but that sickness has passed and there's no real threat to you physically or financially or spiritually, but you still feel that you are emotionally frozen. And that's when fear turns to unhealthy. It can be a thinking or a feeling that something bad is going to happen to you based on the unknown. Unhealthy fear. Unhealthy fear is negative and often holds you back. It keeps you from advancing and it keeps you from doing the things that God wants you to do. And really it keeps you from doing the things that you want to do or that you once wanted to do. It talks you into thinking that you never really wanted those things anyway. Things like a good job or a wife or a husband or a family or whatever. No, you have convinced yourself that you will sit in your house and you will protect yourself. But is that what you've always dreamed for in your life? Is that what you always wanted for yourself? On the other hand, healthy fear gives us the sense of respect for God and what's ahead. Unhealthy fear is a disrespect, actually, for the Lord. Healthy fear is one that is from God for your benefit. Unhealthy fears cause you to stop, completely stop advancing in areas of growth and development. They cause you to stop growing spiritually in Christ. The Bible says in Isaiah 41, 13, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. So how do we get rid of that unhealthy fear in our lives? God doesn't want us to be afraid and fearful of everything that comes our way. But He does want us to have a healthy reverence for the things of God. His desire is we lack no good thing and He will help us face the trials in our lives. Now there are going to be many trials. If you live long enough you'll find out there are going to be many trials and adversities in your life. Trials and adversities that can shut you down and make you have this unhealthy fear of everything. But Remember, the Bible says God has not given us this spirit of fear, but that of power and of love and a sound mind. Knowing that He is with us and knowing that He has a plan for us and that He will lead us through these hard times should give us peace. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know that psalm. It comes from Psalm 23, and that's verses 4 through 6. So when the enemy of your soul tries to whisper that fear into your heart and into your mind, just know that voice is not from God. Trust that the Lord is with you. Nothing can separate you from Him. Remain focused on Jesus and ignore all those distractions that the enemy of your soul wants you to focus on. Refuse to embrace those unhealthy fears because those fears will rob you of what God desires for you. Great is your reward in heaven as you trust God, as you allow the spirit of power and of love to rule in your heart. Unhealthy fear will hold you back in every single way. Make sure that you focus on Jesus in every circumstance and not on this world and all of its distractions. Make sure that you make a decision to stay in His Word and allow His Holy Spirit to speak to you every single day. Believe it. Rely on it. Claim it. Pray the Word. You know what the Word says. And you know God's will for you in your life. You will experience trials and pain at times. And you have to remember that you are never 
alone. God is with you and he's preparing a table just for you in the presence of your enemies. And he wouldn't do that if there was any reason for you to fear that enemy of your soul. You have no reason to fear. Feelings sometimes lie to us. We need to remember that God is with us no matter how we feel because we know the truth of his word. And today I pray that you will pray that God will eliminate that fear in your life so you can live out your purpose in his kingdom. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your word, for your promises. Lord, we know what the Bible says about fear, and we know that unhealthy fear can just paralyze us, Lord. It's not good, and we know that it's not from you. Father, I pray that you'll take those unhealthy fears away, those unreasonable fears. Lord, give us your power and your strength. Lord, help us to be in reverence to you. Help us to be in awe of you and your power. Lord, help us to have a healthy respect and fear of you. But Lord, take those unhealthy fears right out of our lives and help us to live out our purpose. Lord, we thank you that we can call on you in times of need. Lord, for those that we mention by name today and those unspoken requests, you know who they are, Lord, we pray for healing, for peace, for comfort, for strength. Father, today we pray for Bethel Church. We pray that you will bless Pastor Larry. Lord, we have a new pastor coming named Larry too, and I pray that you would prepare him for your service at Bethel and help us to be the people that you want us to be. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Draw us closer to you and help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining me for Sunday School. I pray that you will have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week.